But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me ma wa kwa ba edi ba pen dream TV. So make sure say obe subscribe to channel. No no click the bell. So say the the news to our on subscribe to me. I can in terms of what the affair. So make sure say obe like it. Now nah, what comment? No one share. I'm a full frost on Saka. Now comment session. How so? No person watch it. I will be able to me. I do. I do. I try. I to hold on. Now man for so. I need be a kind kind. Now only Mister Pendulum TV there. I am in some of the courts. We are Ghana. I am politics. I am on the other side. I am Saka. I am near the Abrantina. So me me video. I am Saka. I person no watch. I am near the Abrantina. Me one more thing. I show. So over here video. We I am in this area. Now watch it. I will be able to comment session. I see. This attempt to sell some supposed new vision from Bawia. You see, the man has no credibility. He cannot be believed. The overwhelming perception about him is that he is someone from whose tongue lies fall rapidly like a machine gun. Lies, lies, lies. No credibility, no believability. Randy. Oh, but my, my brother, I kept quiet when you were speaking. I kept quiet when you were speaking. It's not I fair. Beg, you I see, beg. I made so I many statements. You. Randy, forgive me. Please. But I made oh. so many statements without being derogatory. I have not derogated. If you say something that is not true. Maybe you call him. Listen, listen Randy, okay. there's a difference between calling you a liar and saying you have said something. You see, I've said so many understand? things. Oh, I never I went. You see, I was never derogated. This strategy that you have, you've been told. I want you to come about me and criticize this one. You must not. You know that after you speak, after he speaks, you'll be speaking. Okay. Uh, so okay. I, I'm going to continue. So be careful that. you don't invite him to interject you. Randy, there's a policy of this. They've been told that wherever they go and about me, I criticize, they should intervene and disrupt. Who says so? Oh, I know that for a fact. Okay. We are not the first one. You make it. your statement. Randy, the the says I should tells like, lies I'll consistently. Right. He cannot mm. be believed. Randy, what did he go and tell the rule of Cape Coast during the launch of the 2020 manifesto of the MP? Mm. That he will give them a harbor and an airport. Did he not say so? Randy, they have four months. Or let's say five months mm. to be booted out of power. Has he delivered it? You promise an airport and a harbor. The cost of those are much lower than 2,000 megawatts of uh, solar energy that he is promising. He has not delivered that. Why should anybody take you seriously? Randy, was it not the same person who came telling us that he will manage the exchange rate better? Randy, if the exchange rate goes to 16 Ghana cities, that's our exchange two days ago, is it better than at four cities when he inherited it? Was it not the one who told us that they would do away with taxation, from taxation to production? Randy, mm. he has introduced 40 taxes. Did he not lament and condemn borrowing? 120 billion Ghana cities. You said it was too much. Today, even after you suspended paying your, your debts, you owe close, close to 700 billion Ghana cities. 700 billion Ghana cities. Why should we believe anything you say? In fact, after today, he even says that there's nothing about this government that he knows anything about. That he's a driver's mate from Adina to Accra. That's his profession. He's no longer the vice president. He's no longer the, the lead manager of our economy. That he wants to sit here and, and think that the moment you say he, he has said this, people will believe you. Look, Randy, the average person is rational. It is the reason why when people see and hear President Mama, they ascribe more credibility and integrity to him than Baumia. Because Baumia has none. He will say things that he knows are lies because he has said it. And so, is it Randy? The comical politicking that he has introduced into MPP circles. And it reflects in the way all of them speak. A whole vice president can look people in the face and tell them that this economy we have is better than the one he inherited. The economy in which he has defaulted on debt and cannot be is better than the one in which we pay our debt regularly. And this is a person that wants to be taken seriously. No wonder when he goes on pl pl uh, campaign platform, it's only comical of beat dancing that he engages. Now, right? When you say this, you've not delegated him. I have defined his character over the period. Mm. When you lie to me, I have a right to point it out. When you tell me you will build an airport and you don't do it, you have lied to me. And therefore, when you come and say anything else, you cannot be believed. So the fundamental point upon which he will be assessed in this election is that what did he tell us in 2016 and what has been delivered? Any assessment of that would dismiss him as somebody who should not be listened to. And there's a reason why he is going into this election as a heavy underdog. There's a reason why every credible poll says that he is going to lose. And he will lose. Because the people of Ghana, with the greatest respect to you, Randy, are not stupid. They will not go and give 
They will not add timber to a man who cannot carry twigs. Randy, this pen. Look at this pen. See how light it is. We gave it to Baumia, he couldn't carry it. And yet he says we should give him timber and that he has a capacity. So it's, it almost sounds like an insult when he tells the people of Ghana that. And that's why they have dismissed him. Randy, but I'll come to a few things that my brother has said, which are simply not true. Look, President Mama has not said anywhere that he is not a magician to create jobs. It was a mischievous lie published by Daily Guide, owned by the MPP's chairman, Freddie Blay. Former chairman. Former chairman, Freddie Blay. It's a mischievous lie, deliberate lie. Indeed, the exact quote is captured on Ghana Web on Friday, 18th November 2016. Anybody watching me can Google. And right, I'm going to read it to you. He says, the fact of life is that you can only have money in your pocket if you work and earn it. And so there is no magic to put money into pockets, people's pockets. That is why my government is investing as much as it is investing to try and provide our people with skills that they need to enter the world of work. This is a profound, sensible statement by a president who means business. So no amount of lying and twisting would get the MPP to get away with the massive, horrible failure they have recorded. Randy number two, this claim that, and Baumia is the one who trampers it, that they've created 2.1 million dollars. It's another lie. It's one of the examples of the lies he tells. They have not created 2.1 million jobs. It's a bloody lie, Randy. And I'm going to prove it to you. Look, on 16 September 2022, the Minister for Employment, he is the one who has specific a specific portfolio which deals with employment. All the employment data passes through his office. He said that they had created 5.3 million jobs. We know that it's a lie, of course. 5.3 million jobs. The same minister in February 2017 said they had created 3 million jobs. Baumia? It, it, it cannot be February 2017. 2017, at his vetting. Okay. He said that first before this one. He said they had created 3 million jobs as of February 2017. That was, sorry, 2021, yes. 2021. Yes, 2021. So that's four years after they took office. Four years after they took office, they had created 3.3 million jobs. Then in September 2021, barely a year after that, he said it had gone to 5.3 million. Now, eight years after that, Bamiya says they've created 2.1 million jobs. Where is the sense in this? They are telling cock and bull stories in order to deceive the people of Ghana. Randy, if they had done that, there would be no employment in Ghana, as I speak to you, unemployment in Ghana. Because... In the same period, the Ghana Sasa Service has published that when they did a head count of Ghanaians, those who did not have jobs, it was 1.5 million. That's in your population and housing census, the latest one. So if they had indeed created 2.3, this unemployment rate would be wiped out. So when I say he lies, this is an example of it. Randy, let him publish the name of everybody they've employed. If he is a man and he knows he's telling the truth. But he is lying. So please, I think that you in the media must do more. This lying must stop. You see, it is bad enough that he has been such a failure at the management of the economy. But when he comes to add these lies, he insults us further. How is it that you've created this number of jobs and yet unemployment has moved from 8.4% in 2016 to over 14% now? How is that even possible? Where, where is your correlation? Population increase. With population increase. Randy, so, what is so the please, please, terms. Randy, Randy, Randy. But the exact number of unemployed people has been captured. It is 1.55 million mm. by the Ghana Sasa Service. Indeed, last year, they said another 800,000, no, 550,000 fell into unemployment because of economic challenges. So if you add it, that is 2 million. If they create that number of jobs within the same period, it will wipe the South. So that we may even need to import labor to augment the shortfall. So it does not, it's not only a lie. It does not make sense. And yet they go about repeating it as if the people they are addressing are dummies. You don't, you don't respect the people you are governing. Let me come to the... Round up for Randy, me. Yo, he spoke about an hour. Yeah, he spoke round about an hour. No, Randy, we're, 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 Randy, we're wrapping up on this. Randy, so just, just round Randy, up for me, yes. Again, corruption. The grabbing of state property. Randy, look at the state of corruption. I spoke to you about how horrible it is that... A minister of state that he was seeking to defend that. You think that there's any serious realization where they will allow this? A, a, a minister of state is grabbing state property overnight. Suddenly, overnight, you've come into work. You can, you can grab state property like that. Which one? Why? The hotels that they are buying. Is it not essentially state property? 
SNET, what is this? SNET is a private organization. And you, 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 you are happy to defend this. You are happy to defend this kind of behavior. Now we've got to a juncture in our, in, our, in our country where it is right for conflict of interest, abuse of power. If, if Brian Achampo was not a government official, can he even come close to Senate Hotels? If he was not a government official, Randy, if he was not in government, could he even have come close to a government hotel? Let alone want to buy four or six at a go. And he's not even buying one. He's buying four or six at a go. Why? Did we see all, did we see all of them in the opposition? The people who are flaunting wealth and, 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 and are all over the place, claiming they have money. Didn't you see them in the opposition? Randy Akufado, didn't you see him in the opposition? Didn't you see him? But today, he has money to pay 80 million Ghana cities to delegates to vote for him in primaries. Randy, he was a man condemning soul sourcing, was he not? He even said it was corruption. He becomes vice president and his brother, Ibrahim, Ibrahim Baumia, is now the recipient of inflated sole source contracts. That's why I told you that he has no credibility and must be dismissed by the electorate. In opposition, he decried sole source. He said that it was a source of corruption. And I can pull it for you from his Twitter panel. Today, his brother has become a contractor overnight and is getting inflated sole source contracts. He gets his payments first before anybody else under this government. So when Bahamia is able to cough up 80 million to pay delegates, you know exactly where the money comes from. You are fleecing the state. You flaunt corruption in our face. People who could hardly make ends meet suddenly have become wealthy overnight. But you don't see the present relatives. Look at the corruption in the energy sector that Napo has supervised. Jensa, something is sold for six cities. You want to sell it for two cities so that the nation will incur loss so that your friend can have that contract. Right? You know there's another one regarding electricity. electricity. See, one. in the same energy sector. You know, there's a, the, the, now they generate electricity from the gas they, they end and then sell to the mines. Now they want to buy electricity from ECG streets and sell to the mines. I see the ECG cannot sell electricity to the mines. But they want it at a completely knockdown rate below the commercial rate. So they will make super normal profit. And Baumia, eh, sorry, Baumia and Napo are supervising that. Was it not Baumia who lowered the conditions precedence, which called for a bank guarantee in the PDS deal and made it possible for people who did not have the capacity to earn leverage in ECG, make billions, run it down, live with the money, and have not refunded it. And because of that, we lost the million challenge account. So the corruption, Randy. Akufado, was he not the one behind the Mithilenos deal? A Mary that we were going to get for one dollar in two years' time. They wanted to renew you for a billion under shady circumstances. When they were caught red-handed, the excuse was that Akufado was on our way. Meanwhile, it was his executive secretary who signed the letter to parliament. The, the moving pina scandal. Randa, Randy, are there not certified visa frosters in this, in this government? You and the sporting fraternity. The people not go and pose like sports journalists like yourself in Australia, sent there by government officials. The president says that he has asked the CID to look into it. On the eve of an MPP conference where people in the Volta region make a bit of noise, he says that the person who was accused was not the one who orchestrated it. Yes, but he won't tell us who orchestrated it. Randy, he speaks about judgment debts. You see, Randy, this government, have they not incurred a one seventy million dollar judgment debt that must be paid? And if you have 170 million dollars to pay, why don't you budget for it? Yet yeah, they said that the NEC had a budget line for judgment there, so it is wrong. You see, that's why I spoke about comical political, shallow, shallow political. Things, they say things that make no sense. Why right? the 170 million that they are supposed to pay to GP uh, CG? Hmm? 170 million. If they have to spend 170 million, will it not go into the budget of the government of Ghana? Randy, right? yes or no? So if it goes there, does that mean that they have done any wrong? Oh, I beg your pardon. Randy, if it goes there, does that mean that you have done wrong by merely budgeting? Forget about the fact that you have caused loss. And people like Wofer Dami and Co. will also answer for it. But the, the very fact that you have that debt on your, on, your, on your head, you must budget for it. So we had a debt with CP, which we needed to pay, and so you make a budget for And because it was in a the budget, they say we have put judgment debt in a budget. So that was wrong. Shallow, shallow politically. Political that has no respect for people's sensibilities. Andy, look at the economy as we speak. 
How can anybody look at this economy and go and vote for Baumia? And you end on that. How can anybody mm. look at this economy and go and vote for Baumia? Look at the exchange rate now. Look at what it is doing to Ghanaian businesses. Randy, for the first time in our history, people who have taken their hard-earned money and given to governments in the form of bonds have been told that they will not be paid because government doesn't have money. It's not that they, they have the money and they won't pay. They don't have it. Mm. So 1.3 million of such people have had to go into poverty. Pensioners, right? The pensioners, people who have served this country and have gone on pension, they have to go and pick it at the finance ministry. Even then, they have not received their money. Only last week, they, re they, they reactivated the picketing again. Because I heard them issuing ultimatums to the finance ministry. When you run down an economy like this, who should tolerate you on any ballot paper?